Before we get started, I need to tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Nebula. For those who don't know, Nebula is a streaming service created by YouTubers who are looking for a unique space that one, gives us a bit more freedom to create, and two, allows us to provide more in-depth, cutting-edge, challenging, and thoughtful content to you, our viewers. As much as I love and appreciate YouTube, it can be difficult to survive on the platform because of the countless challenges and barriers to creation that you all really don't get to see on the opposite side of the camera. Not only do I have to worry about ridiculous copyright strike because I used five seconds of a comedy special in an hour long video, I also have to worry about how many curse words I use in a specific time span, whether or not talking about a controversial topic is going to get the video demonetized, or if it's even worth me talking about certain subjects at all because they won't find an audience here on YouTube. I don't have to worry about this much because of Nebula. Nebula is not an algorithmically driven service. It's a subscription service, which means that when you log on, you are in control of what you see, not just some robot that is trying to guess what it is you want to see or what will make you watch for longer. You get to find the creators you're interested in and watch the subjects you want to see more content about. Maybe you want to see Jesse Gender's upcoming original film, Identities. Maybe you want Lindsay Ellis's new video on The Beatles. Maybe you want Real Life Lore's video on the fall of ISIS. Maybe you want to help support an upcoming project I'm finally getting the green light on that I can't talk about much, but I can at least hint at it. Or maybe you don't want original content, which by the way, all of those were original pieces of content you can't see anywhere else but Nebula. But instead, maybe you just want to watch these creators or other creators that you like and not worry about ad breaks or overly aggressive comments in the comment section. Whatever might entice you to Nebula, just understand one thing. You are helping me and other creators be just a bit more independent and a bit more free in what we make, knowing that we have the support of Nebula behind us, support that you give when you sign up using my promo code Signify B Sides, which also gives you 40% off your subscription fees. Thank you so much for watching this video and this ad read. Shout out to the people at Nebula for supporting the video and now on to the video. So Dave Chappelle released his newest comedy special on Netflix this past weekend. And with it, I think it's time to revisit some of my old takes on Dave. Back in 2021, I think I did a video called Dave Chappelle Only Tells Half the Truth in response to his special, The Closer. And I made that video because I was really frustrated with the fact that a lot of people who I was in a community with, or at least was connected to, didn't seem to realize how harmful Dave was being in that special. People don't know trans people, don't know enough about the trans experience, and don't really understand that Dave was kind of talking out of his ass. They kept on saying Dave is the truth for saying what he has to say, not realizing Dave didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. And I tried to be as nice as I could with it to, you know, illustrate the problems of what Dave was saying while not alienating people with the fact that they also don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And it's a pretty successful video. I have a ton of people that tell me that watching that video helped them see things differently. So I look at that as a legit win in my book to know that I made something that helped people understand something that, you know, needed to be understood better. And now two or three years later, after watching his newest special, The Dreamer, I can say without a doubt that I was cooking when I made that shit. Like I was basically looking into the future. Like regardless of the response it had in the moment, I don't know if any video I've done has so perfectly stood the test of time. I give myself six out of five stars. Would recommend because the dreamer, Dave's newest special, it felt like Dave Chappelle watched my video and tried to find as many ways to prove that I was completely right in my analysis of him. So let's break this down. First, let's get some bullshit out the way. Whenever I challenge the status quo for some people around not being an asshole to the LGBTQ community, I always get some of the same responses. Number one, why are y'all trying to cancel him? First off, clearly Dave cannot be canceled. Two years ago, we had the same exact problem and he barely skipped the beat. In fact, he signed on for more specials with Netflix in the middle of all the controversy. Rich people don't get canceled to the point where they lose their ability to continue being rich and famous. And for comedians in particular, it gives them this special edge that they're saying the thing that nobody wants them to say, which is like, it doesn't make sense that nobody wants them to say those things when they keep literally getting paid 
to say those things. What's happening was people were critiquing Dave. They were telling him that his jokes were bad and he should stop making them. What you all are calling cancellation is actually criticism. Stop being babies about it. Furthermore, if he could be canceled, good. If there were a comedian making fun of black people the way that Dave makes fun of trans people, we would be on their ass. We would have gotten them off the map as quickly as possible. There's only one comedian that dares joke about black people in a semi-negative way, and that's Bill Burr. And I've never heard any black people complain about him because unlike Dave, it's clear he has some familiarity with black folks to make jokes that aren't the equivalent of chicken and watermelon jokes. Well, you know what? I'll get to that later. Number two. Why must he agree with their lifestyle? Why can't he have a difference of opinion? <sighs> Y'all, no one is arguing about this. This is something that people do when they have a fundamental and viscerally negative response to an issue or an ideology that is now socially unacceptable to have a negative response to. AKA, you're bigoted, but you don't want to admit it. So you just say, well, it's his right to be bigoted. They never want to explain why their opinion or ideology is not wrong. They just want you to leave them alone while they share that opinion or ideology that is overtly harmful to millions of people, maybe in a comedy special. It's really obvious when you think about it. In fact, we can really stop the list at two. Just, just, just cut that shit there. Cause almost all the excuses that people are gonna bring up in the comment section are going to have nothing to do with the actual material issue of Dave Chappelle's jokes and how they're transphobic or how they're punching down or how they do harm. It's only gonna be about his right to be those things and why you shouldn't care, but it's not going to be anything explicitly explaining why there's not a wrong being done. And of course, Dave Chappelle has that right but that doesn't change the consequences. It's freedom of speech, not freedom from consequences and criticism. So whatever other cope excuses you have, such as it's just a joke. Why do you care so much? Why must we all have the same opinion? People are too sensitive, etc. All that is bullshit immaterial to the discussion at hand. We're moving on. I also want to point out that none of this means that you can't on some level enjoy Dave Chappelle, in my opinion. I don't take such stances on media for the most part. As I watched this special, I had a few good laughs. I laughed more at this than I did at the closer because parts of it, even some of the offensive parts were genuinely clever and funny. I didn't find the trans jokes funny and I'll explain why in a moment, but I did get in some good laughs. None of this means I can't critique it or point out its issues. The first Black Panther movie is one of my favorite movies of all time and I made a 90 minute video on why it has a ton of problems. I did the same thing to Lauren Hill, Donald Glover, etc. Please, if you take issue with something I say in this video or if you're one of those head ass people that's like, why you always gotta talk about the thing and analyze stuff, just don't watch my shit. <laughs> and, and stop leaving these comments. Cause if you leave that comment, it makes YouTube put my shit back in front of you. I mean, you can keep watching my, sh obviously you can keep watching and keep commenting that pays me, but like I'm making fun of you on my head and sometimes in responses to your comments, but we're, we're, we're off track, we're off track, we're off track. My bad y'all, my bad. What I'm trying to say is if you're going to take the time to leave a negative, like disagreeable comment. Take issue with the argument, not the surrounding details. None of that helps me see anything differently. It will mostly be ignored. And I will think you're stupid and bigoted, but too stupid to realize you're bigoted. You, you get me? Just, just, just saying. So on to the dreamer. Dave did something that I thought was really disappointing for a comedian of his stature. Just shows kind of how much he's deteriorated since his killing me softly days, which is what he talks about at the beginning where Dave spends like 50% of this special, not in a perfect half, but like at different times, lampshading himself over and over while calling it a joke. So what do I mean by lampshading? Lampshading is when a movie or show or some media purposely points out something that's dumb and makes no sense within it as a way to wink at the audience, hoping to disarm criticism of something that's dumb or makes no sense within it. It's them letting the audience know that they know that the thing they're doing is dumb, but to just go along with it. We're having fun here. Just, just, just go with me here. For instance, there's that one moment in the Avengers Age of Ultron where there's literal gods and green monsters and people with magical powers fighting in the city. And here's Hawkeye with his bow and arrow. And he has this whole speech about how he knows it doesn't make okay, sense. Look, the city is flying. We're fighting an army of robots. 
and I have a bow and arrow. None of this makes sense. I'm hit and miss on this in media because sometimes it is funny. And as a creator, I sometimes do feel like I need the signals to the audience that I know something doesn't quite add up, but there's just to go with it, right? But in other situations, it's just really lazy and more of a crutch for poor writing or bad jokes. And in Chappelle's case, it's like, again, 50% of the jokes or at least specifically almost all of the jokes that he makes at other people's expense. So what he does over and over in this special is sly ways of announcing that what he's doing is offensive and not inherently funny and punching down and then does it anyway. I ain't doing trans jokes no more. You know what I'm gonna do tonight? Tonight, I'm doing all handicapped jokes. <laughs> well, they're not as organized as the gays. <laughs> And I love punching down. And that in and of itself is supposed to be funny. He switches from trans people to people with disabilities for a second and the whole punchline is just, look, I'm so offensive, I'll even make fun of people with disabilities in 2024. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Isn't that fun? If you're not overly critical, you'll let him get away with it. But if you're at all critical and not easily amused by marginalized people being made the butt of jokes, then you'll realize that no actual joke is being made. It's just us laughing at Dave Chappelle's capacity to be offensive, which at this point, I don't find all that funny. I stopped finding that funny a decade ago when I stopped watching the Chappelle show. Damn, that's two decades ago. There's a few clever moments in his offensive jokes, but for the most part, is him being lazy and punching down. Two things that he openly admits during the show that I accused him of in my video two years ago. But again, he admits them jokingly to lampshade what he's doing. He knows people are gonna say that he's punching down, so he says, look, I'm punching down, before then, punching down. So now you can't complain about it, no. It's just lazy and it doesn't really work. And the reason it doesn't work isn't inherently because I or anyone is too sensitive, even though that would be perfectly fine in my perspective. If you're trying to be offensive, don't complain when you offend people, like that is what it is. But to me, it doesn't work because I don't believe he understands what and who he's talking about, nor does he actually respect the community he's making jokes about. Like later in the set, Dave makes a racist joke about his own wife, who I believe is Filipino, and I laughed hard at it because it was a lowbrow, dumb joke that came out of nowhere and it was incredibly well-timed. So it was funny to me. You could also say that it was inherently making fun of the nature of stereotypes, not so much just being a stereotype. And more significantly, I don't think that Dave has any real issues with Asian people or his wife or her looks. And he eventually turns that same joke against himself soon after. I said, how'd you open that phone? She said, it was easy, nigga. All I had to do was mash my nose and go like this. And it opened right up. I said, what the fuck? So we have all these other elements to the joke where it doesn't feel like punching down. It feels like including a community within the comedy. That's what Dave often insinuates that he's trying to do, but it doesn't come across because you can make certain jokes about say your loved ones and friends and the humor can be the focus as opposed to whatever offense that might be being made from the joke. But for me, that is the bar for offensive humor. The joke shouldn't just be a reinforcement of an idea that's offensive or laughing at one's capacity to be offensive. And that's what's missing from Dave's trans jokes. Going back to Bill Burr, Bill Burr makes a lot of jokes around black people and race, but the majority of these jokes are not explicitly tied to racist stereotypes around black people. And they're more about Bill Burr's confusion, discomfort, and constant pursuit to trying to figure out how to effectively engage with black people because it's very clear that Bill Burr is in community with black people, including his own wife. Judging anybody. I didn't know anything about lotion. Never used it the first 33 years of my life. Never used it. Till one night I was going out with this black girl, right? She was getting ready and she was just putting that shit on everywhere. Just slathering it on. I thought she had like a rash or something. She's like, you're an idiot, stick out your arm. So I stick out my arm and ever so gently, she just drags her nails down. This smoke starts coming up. It's like pastry flakes flying off, track marks, she's signing her name. She's like, you see that? She goes, that's ashy. 
And now you still might be offended at some of the jokes that Bill Burr makes, but they definitely are much higher on the totem pole than chicken and watermelon jokes. They don't hinge explicitly on lazy stereotypes. If you go back to the closer, the punching down jokes are all of his trans jokes. Trans women cut off their penises, trans women are delusional, transness is a white thing because he consistently speaks of transness as separate from blackness, which it is not. It's the exact same trans jokes. Every edgy comedian from the late 2000s has been making for like five or six years now. I could have my legs removed, have wheels put on, identify as a pram, right? <laughs> Who else gets to have that? It's just a mushy, I don't fucking have any idea. I would give a million dollars to just wake up, oh, I'm an owl, that's what the thing is. So what this shows is that Dave doesn't know or doesn't care enough about the target of the joke to find something clever or insightful to say. And he gets away with it because he has now cultivated an audience that also doesn't know or care and thus thinks it's funny. There's one super telling moment in the closer that I wish I'd have talked about more in that video, which is when Dave mentions one of the many anti-trans bathroom bills and people in the crowd cheered when he mentioned this and Dave has to suddenly correct them and point out that these are bad, mean laws that hurt trans people for no reason. There's laws, the mean laws. In our country, North Carolina passed a law once that said a person in North Carolina must use the restroom that corresponds with the gender they were assigned on their birth certificate. No, 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 no. No, that's not a good law. And in this one moment, Dave maybe shows that he doesn't hate trans people, he just, again, doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Cause he probably wouldn't have written that joke if he had known that since before 2021, when Dave released this special, there have been like five or 600 different anti-trans bills put on the books specifically just to limit the freedoms of trans people in America. Now, is that Dave Chappelle's fault? No, of course not. And thankfully many of these bills die before getting signed into law, but they illustrate the grave reality of what's going on with trans people in America and how they are being used as a focal point for right wing political movement that hurts everybody. So we should never be buying into that rhetoric, if not just for our own selfish desire to survive our own shit. But that shows you why it's different than just, oh, you can't take a joke. For their situation, shit ain't that funny right now. For me, and from what I've been told by trans folks I'm in community with, the biggest problem with Dave was his misplaced confidence in being able to speak on them so frivolously when he doesn't really know what he's talking about and doesn't realize how harmful he's being. Not just in making jokes, but in attempting to validate these jokes as an appropriate and important criticism that the trans community needed to hear from him. Dave Chappelle. And instead of processing that criticism, he doubled and now has tripled down on it. Like Dave does this thing now at the end of a lot of his specials where he stops, you know, being a stand up comedian and becomes a philosopher and storyteller. And most of the time when he does this, it's really, really good because he is very insightful on the things he actually has knowledge of. But in the closer, he brought up his one trans friend. After making jokes about trans people for 45 minutes, he brought up his one trans friend that sadly did commit suicide and used that tangential experience from someone that he heard from to make an umbrella proclamation about the entirety of the trans community. Imagine for a second if fucking Larry the Cable Guy did chicken and watermelon jokes for 60 minutes and then at the last 10 minutes said, well, one time I was talking to Chris Rock and he said he totally agrees with what I'm saying. Anyway. If Dave would have just left it at jokes and not have made this grand statement, he probably wouldn't have gotten into that much trouble. It's that he tried to play it off and then cap about how he was being misrepresented and that he was so offended at being called out. They said I was punching down and I never do that. And this nigga like, <laughs> the nigga then did it in this vid, like in this special, it's like he didn't even know what he said in the last special. Everything he said in the closer to defend himself he completely reverses on here, including the whole, I'm not gonna make trans jokes anymore part. Remember that? Remember how you all clapped for him and said, good job, Dave, for deciding he was not gonna be bigoted anymore in public? And then he couldn't even do that shit? <sighs> Clearly dude can't help himself. The, the scary sad thing is, is that if I know anything about transphobia, it tends to like 
create a, a virus in some people. Like some people low key get addicted to that. If you go on Twitter, you'll see it a lot. So I'm hoping that Dave can get on to another topic. Like we're now four or five specials deep into this shit. But you know, at least he proved me right. I'll, I'll take that win. I'm FD Signifier, and this has been Lightwork.